Hi everybody, this is Carlo from Common Beat Music Repair. Today we are going to discuss uh, disassembly and removal of the click stop on a Techniques 1200 pitch fader. Normally these have that center stop that I'm sure most of you that are watching this video are used to. If you look inside the switch here, I'm sorry, the fader, you can see inside here there's a small little ball bearing in there and when we ride along the fader wall it starts to go and go and then it clicks and you hear it click into place what you have in there is a small steel ball with a little spring behind it so that when it's rolling along when it gets to that point it push the little spring sees the finds the hole and then that's what makes the click kind of stop into place and then it holds zero you can remove these and actually what it is nice is it gives you a smooth transition from the uh, upper range um, through the through the sweep and then you can go hit zero and then go back across it. The nice thing also is that your light will still light up and everything else but it will have less of a tendency to want to pull into the zero point when that ball is getting close to that click point so you can get these little in between positions right before and right after which is easier for beat matching and stuff like that. Um, a lot of DJs prefer this and it's been something I got asked to do on this particular repair so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it. Our first step is I'm going to use a, a vise here just to keep it steady for you to watch. First thing we want to do is we need to remove the solder on these points here. Let's get you zoomed in a little bit. Sorry for the lighting situation here. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay. So, first thing we want to do, I use this thing called a uh, desoldering. Oh, I'm sorry, it's called a solder sucker. What happens is when you heat up the solder, this thing has a little plunger inside, which I activated by pushing this down. When you put this little hole on the end up to this, where the solder is hot, the suction from that will pull the solder inside of it and clean out the hole. So we're going to start, you have four here, four here, and then the LED up top. The LED, we need to remember the orientation that it goes back in. And the easiest way with a Techniques 1200 fader is if you see the word Techniques here, it's facing us upright. The positive side of that LED is this top one and they actually folded it, the, the fold it over for you because the LED on the positive side has a longer leg. That tells you what the polarity is. So I'm going to start by pulling this off. We're going to desolder all this stuff. Sometimes you need to give these a couple of, uh, if you have one of these desoldering tools, you got to just hit it a couple times. Sometimes make sure you get all the solder out of the hole. This way the fader will drop out easily. You don't want to have to tug it out of there because you can damage a trace on the board and then your fader, you're going to have you're going to have to make some jumpers and stuff like that and try to get it and do a bunch of circuit board work which is not desirable. So this should just go ahead and press down. I'm going to pull that out out of the way. and then we're going to go ahead and desolder over here. Now what Techniques does to sort of lock this in before it's soldered is they actually bend the pins over. So you have to make sure that you go ahead and bend those back before we pull it out. Oh, we got one more. All right, so using a small screwdriver, I'm just going to get underneath here and kind of bend those up until I can grab them with a pair of needle nose pliers, like so. A small pair of needle nose pliers is going to be crucial here because you're going to also need it to actually pull the pitch fader apart. 
So we're just going to give this a wiggle and this will drop out and the same with the other side. We can get this out of our way. Put that there for now. Now if we look at this this pitch fader, it says Japan right here. And what that lets us know is this board needs to we need to make sure that Japan is facing downwards towards this metal tab here so that when we take this apart and we put it back on the orientation is correct or else it won't go back in this board the right way and everything would be upside down. So we're just going to crank this back here like this. I'm going to start, I'm going to, you have, you have 10 tabs here that you need to open up so that you can pull this apart. I'm going to just use the screwdriver to get them started opened up and then we can get in there with the pliers and straighten them out. Last one. I'm just going to go through and make sure these are all standing up vertically so this board just pops right out here. If you look at that board, it uh, this only well this can only go in one way. So when this fader inserts in that main that main circuit board, it only goes in one way. So that sort of tells you what the uh, orientation of this thing is. So we look at this pitch fader. It's pretty typical amount of dirty. It looks like there's no damage or anything here. So the easiest thing to do with these is take a little contact cleaner. I use Deoxit D5. It's pretty standard issue stuff for uh, electronics service repair. I'm just going to spray a little bit on the rag here and then just wipe this fader clean and get all any grime or dirt off there. And then just give it a good once over, make sure it looks good. Looks good to me. Let me get a little more light going for you. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to look at is these little fingers here for our, our fader itself. That we want to make sure that these are really nice and clean. Um, Dirt likes to build up in these little fingers here, and that makes it so. Here, I'm going to kind of try to get you in a little closer so you can see them. So, if you look at the, you have these little fingers. These are what go along these little slider, these wipers here. That wipes across there to change the resistance output of this fader to slow the table up or to speed the table up or slow it down. Sorry, I'm making this on the fly. Anyways, so I just like to use a uh, toothbrush. Works good. You can just brush, you're going to go this way towards the ends of the brushes. This is just going to clean out any dirt that may be stuck between those little fingers. Sometimes it's just good to, I have a small pair of uh, electronics tweezers here. I like to just get everything nice and clean. And then we're actually going to clean the inside of this too. But since we are removing the ball, we're just going to pull this up slowly. So this will come out in one piece, and I won't lose everything on you. What you see there, that's the little ball. So we can pull that out of there. And then the little spring that comes up behind it, that's going to come out of that hole. And then you just have an empty hole. And that's how we're going to leave this, because this guy does not want the click. So this is the little spring tab for our fader. We're going to put that over here for now. And then this is just a a little dust cover plate that keeps uh, dirt and grime from getting on the spring tab there. So same thing, I'm going to put a little bit of contact cleaner on the rag here. This works just as good. You can also use uh, isopropyl alcohol, it's nice for cleaning. I actually usually prefer to use that because it's a lot less expensive. So for the inside of this, we're going to clean this with a little bit of alcohol. We just want to get any grime or grease that's in here. Because the grease, what happens is the grease that's in here initially, it ends up picking up all that dirt and stuff that got, comes inside of here, and that gets all over the fingers of your of your fader, and then you start it starts to read weird. It starts to you know affect the platter in strange ways. So it's good for all this to be as clean as you can get it. Once in a while, I open these up, and uh, especially you know DJs that are working in clubs and stuff. Last one I opened up had a uh, 
vodka and Red Bull that had been spilled inside the pitch vader. So I ended up having to take this plate here and it had a solid layer of sugary goo on it. So I ended up having to take a that same toothbrush and some rubbing alcohol and scrub the thing to get all the the grime and garbage and stuff off of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a little bit of grease here. We don't need too much. We're just going to just a little bit on the edges here. Just ever so little. Just a small layer. Just keeps everything nice and smooth on the top edge. This little plastic thing is actually pretty slippery, so it slides pretty pretty well. The other thing is just to check and make sure there's no grease built up or anything here on this piece. That all looks pretty good, so we can go ahead and reassemble that. So you're just going to brush out the corners here. Dust likes to build up in there, too. You don't have to take your fader down this far, necessarily. Sometimes you can get a pretty good job done with just some compressed air. But uh, And then we're going to want to make sure that we, when we put this back together, that the ball, the hole where the ball bearing was, is facing back in the same direction. Because these little fingers that slide on the fader have to face in a certain direction. Okay, so now that we got that all set, we're going to put this plate back on with Japan facing down. And now that since we bent, since we bent the tabs up vertical, this will just drop right back on. You know, you want to just make sure, feel this, make sure that you can feel that the spring is in place. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to drop this back in place. And then I like to go ahead and just push the tabs down on two corners to sort of hold the whole thing together. And then I can pull it out of the vise and get in this little, and get it, all the rest of them pushed down. I'm going to zoom back out for a second here. Okay. So there's a nice, there's a little gap here. It's good when you're closing these tabs and st you don't want to go up here because you'll bend that top plate, which you don't want to do. So we're going to go ahead and just get all these tabs pushed back down so that it holds the board in place like this. Okay. Just going to give that one another squeeze, just make sure it's nice and flat. These should be at a 90 degree angle and bend over, up and over the edge. You can see that they are on that side, so I'm going to go ahead and do this side. Some, I mean, sometimes I've seen people hit the fader or mash the fader, and then what ends up happening is it blows this whole back shell off, which is, you'd be surprised how much abuse these things can take and still be reassembled and work just fine. It's crazy to think that something, you know, built, these. I mean, a lot of these MK2s that I work on, I mean, they were, they were from the 80s, so... They're at least as old as I am, and I'm 32, so here is the plate. We're going to put this all back together. So for this part, we can just clamp this back in here again, like that. And then I'm going to take and reinsert my board back on here. You just want to give this a gentle press on. You don't want to go and mash the pins or bend one over, so just take your time, work, work slow. I'm going to put the LED in last, but before I put the LED in, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to calibrate this pitch fader. If you want to, you can add the twist back into these pins like Techniques did. They kind of they usually twist the middle ones, but this one happened to have the ones bent over on the side. Obviously, it doesn't really make a difference. We're just trying to hold the fader in tight. Okay, so that's on there tight. It's one assembly again, and we're going to go ahead and re-solder that. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so we're all set there. We'll come back and we'll do the LED last. Now for this part, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. And we're gonna go. We want to. We're gonna uh, calibrate this pitch fader so that when we are at zero. Oh, actually, what I forgot to mention is since we 
we lost that ball. This is why I decided to put the LED in last. Now you can see because the ball's missing that we don't really know where zero is because we don't have a click. But you can look in the hole and if you see here, it's white because that's the edge of the fader and then you know we, we would go past it and it's empty space. But when you get this back towards where the center position is, you need to do that in order to calibrate this thing. You get you can kind of take and center that original that hole from where the ball used to go over the gap and then you can you know so we know where zero is relatively. Obviously you could be a little before or after it and you'll be okay. It's not that sensitive so you don't really stand you're not going to hurt anything by having it be you know half a millimeter one way or half a millimeter the other way you'll be okay. So I'm going to take my multimeter and I'm going to go and set that to resistance and we put one lead on the brown wire here and the other one goes on the red. So right now we're measuring 3K. The stock settings in the Techniques factory service manual calls for 2.7K ohms or 2700 ohms. Uh, and then it says plus or minus one. Plus or minus one means this third position. So we would have 2.7 and then we could have 2.71 or 2.69 would actually be within their, their specified tolerance for what the zero position is on this thing. If you're having a problem with two zero points, th th those kind of problems happen. I like to give this a little squirt of contact cleaner as well. Just to, They usually haven't been turned because it's not something that you adjust all the time. So you can kind of, we're just going to kind of give this a turn back and forth just to get any g grime out of there. It makes adjusting this much easier. So I'm just going to roll this down slow until I get to 2.70 or as close to it as I can. Two point, that's pretty close. That's within uh, two thousandths of a uh, of an ohm. Uh, I think we'll be okay. Nobody's going to know the difference. That's about as close as to two point seven as you could hope to get. Okay, so that's the calibration part. Now, if we want to just check and see <coughs> that it's working, when we go down to the low position here, this would be increasing the speed of the table. When you by increasing the speed, you're lowering the resistance that's back feeding the, uh, the drive section of the table. So when you get this all the way to its lowest point, it should be about 3 ohms, give or take. This one, okay, so this one's 1.5. One there's a little bit of variance there, just on the tolerances based on what this is, uh, how this is designed. And then if you go to the upper range, it's about 17,000 ohms. So we're going to go back to the center position here. Just make sure that, you know, no grime or anything uh, that we didn't see. It was still in there and causing a funny reading. So look at that. 2.7, right on the money. This fader is 100%. It's ready to go. It's in really good shape. And now it doesn't have the center click. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall that LED. And then I'll put it back in the table. So the LED should just slide back down in there and you're going to push it down until it seats again. <clears throat> It'll kind of click into place because it's got these little uh, tabs on the bottom of the legs that kind of hold it in so that it doesn't just fall out. Then I'm going to go ahead and push that one leg back down to hold it in place while I turn it upside down. I'm just going to reflow some solder here. And there we are. The fader is all set. If we wanted to double check it, we could put it back on the table, which I'll do for you real quick. Just so you can see how it all works. Actually, yeah, we're going to put the specs down. Run that through there.
one more for the other side, and you got to make sure that you get this little ground wire here. This actually comes from the, uh, the tone arm setup that's under where the RCA wires are. It just connects every, this is what connects everything to the chassis here. So the top plinth is, uh, <coughs> everybody's, everything is grounded together on this. I'm just flip this back over and put our oh, I got it upside down that like that and then you want to make sure you just tuck these wires back in underneath here so that nothing touches the platter when you put it back on just for real quick I'm just going to stick uh, a couple of feet under here because I have a bunch of other work to do on the table but I just want to show you that we are indeed uh, correct with the platter, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. Let's plug this in over here. All right. Gonna go over. We're gonna go over here and just show you the uh, the dots, and you can see that they're moving. The way they're supposed to. Hopefully, you can see that. Might be hard to see on this thing. And as we start to increase. We get some movement, forward movement that way. As we decrease, we get the movement going the other way. That's a good working fader. We're all set. This job's done. I'm going to move on and do the target light next. And I'm also going to do um, just some other uh, sort of tightening up on this table. So if you're curious about changing out the target light to LED, I'm going to have another video posted up by the end of the day. And you can check that out. Thanks for watching.